What's up guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And we are going to talk about this absolutely gorgeous timber rattlesnake. Now this is one of the ones that we have native in our state here in North Carolina. And we're gonna talk about this beautiful girl and her species here today. Before we get into that, right in that bottom corner, right down there, is gonna be our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that, and we appreciate you doing so. And for those that already have, we appreciate you following along week after week after week. Now, let's get right into this. So this is the beautiful and amazing timber rattlesnake, also known as the canebrake rattlesnake. Now, some people argue there's a difference. There's actually not. Uh, most of science has proven there's not really that big of a difference uh, in none. There is a little bit of difference in the venom, some hematoxic, some neurotoxic properties if it comes to certain elevations. And certain uh, states, they will notice there's a little bit of a difference. But as far as classification goes, there is no difference between the timber rattlesnake and the canebrake break. Uh, some people just call it one, some people just call it the other. One of the things that they're most known for is having this copper band that goes right down the spine. It's an amazing, amazing snake. This is a larger body snake for the United States. Now, of course, the scientific name is known as Crotalus horridus. <laughs> And of course, I guess if you get bit, it would be horridus. Um, so the hematoxic venom is going to do a nasty, nasty job uh, with inside of you. Now, we had one come in to us uh, a long time ago, and of course, it was... Uh, uh, it was named Karma, and uh, Karma had bit somebody, and I guess uh, Karma really does bite, huh? But anyways, it tends to happen from time to time. Now, with that being said, these guys are native all over the eastern United States. One of the, again, largest bodied rattlesnakes that we have, and not only in North Carolina, but also it's one of the larger bodied rattlesnakes for the whole United States. These guys can get anywhere from about three and a half to upwards of six to seven feet have been recorded from time to time. They do have primarily a hematoxic venom, which means it's going to break down the red blood cells. It's just a complete breakdown of that. could also cause a necrotic effect. These guys right here do have immense venom sacs, not quite as big as the Eastern Diamondback, but their venom sacs are quite big. Now, they'll have these zigzagged lines, which is their telltale for this specific species. Sometimes it looks like an M. Sometimes it may look like a V, like this one right here. You can see the V right here, or if you go M that way, even kind of a W if you're looking at it sideways. <clears throat> but this is one of the ways to tell them. Now, in different states, you're going to notice there's going to be different color variations. The pattern tends to stay somewhat the same. And understand with each snake, their pattern is unique to them like a fingerprint. So with this particular timber, there's going to be some subtle differences in, other, in another timber and in another timber and in another timber and so on and so forth. So with that being said, there will be some subtle differences when it comes to identification. Their identification, hers will be different than another one's, even though the pattern and everything is the same. With that being said, the color will change as well. When you go higher in elevation, they get darker. So understand all down through here, you see light and then all of a sudden it starts turning black down here. That is natural for the timber rattlesnake. Even the lighter colored ones than her will have this blacker coloration in the tail area. However, the body may be really, really light. If you go into Northern Virginia, if you go on up into even higher elevations, New Hampshire, places like that, they will be much, much darker than what she is throughout the whole body. The reason that is in higher elevations, it's colder more often. The darker the animal, the faster it can draw the sunlight in so that it can warm up faster. In more southern elevations like Florida and Georgia, it doesn't need to be as dark because if it was in those blistering summer days, it would get hotter even faster. So they need the lighter color to refract the sun and of course the more northerly timber rattlesnakes need the darker coloration so they can draw in the sun much faster, warm up much quicker. All right. Now, again, these guys are an actual pit viper. They have two sets of holes in their head, one nostrils and one which is the heat sensing pit of which, of course, I have showed you right there. Now, with that being said, they also have independent fangs, moving fangs, like most of your viper species do. The fangs are not short, they actually fold back up into the mouth. And when they come, when they bite, they come out and it punctures. Punctures and injects, okay? And then folds back into their mouth. 
These guys do have really long fangs by comparison. Uh, most of your viper species do. They're quite a bit longer and they're independently moving. All right. Now, again, when it comes to rattlesnakes, rattles, you cannot necessarily tell the age by the amount of buttons you see on a rattle. The reason why is because every time they shed, they grow a new button. In the wild, you may actually be able to give kind of a guess because if meals are really, really limited, then they may only shed once, maybe twice throughout a whole summer season because of limited food. The more food they eat, the more they shed. That's just the way that it goes. However, in captivity, there's absolutely no way to really be able to know what the age of a snake is just off of buttons alone. Because this girl right here has had as many as 21 buttons. She's about seven, eight years old. So hey, remember, every time they shed, they grow a new button. But this right here, beautiful little rattle, beautiful little rattle, and a nice little button on there. It's a nicely uh, displayed rattle. Hers is quite a bit darker. You'll notice some, like the Western Diamondbacks, theirs will have that tan coloration. Hers is quite dark. So with that being said, understand in the wild, make sure you remember that if you come across a rattlesnake, or first off, don't mess with it, but if you come across one, don't go off of the buttons, uh, the, the levels of buttons on the rattle as to actually know how old that snake possibly is. Not quite as uh, acute with aging the snake as most people might think. All right. Now, this has been the Timber Rattlesnake. Hope you've enjoyed this. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful girl. She is wonderful, wonderful little snake. Big, big snake. I can't really say little. She's big. This right here is the Timber Rattlesnake, also known as the Cane Break. We appreciate you following along week after week. I am Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We appreciate you following along. Make sure to write in. Let us know of other things you want us to film about. Feel free to leave comments in the, in the, in the comment section below. Our information will be in the description below. Don't forget, we do have the TikTok channel now under the same name, Reptile Rangers. Feel free to go over there and find that. We have all kinds of uh, fun, short, little tidbits that we put up on there. Now again, we appreciate you following along week after week after week. We'll see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.